Good news, bad news this week on the Inter Miami Weekly Show. Bad news coming off a loss against Tigres, which halted the winning ways of the club. Good news still through to the round of 32 here in the 2024 League Cup. All this week on the Inter Miami Weekly Show. with us again here at Chase Stadium alongside the Arsenal great Kieran Gibbs. I'm Joe Malfa. Kieran, it's, it's a little bit of a weird one. We haven't been doing this too much lately, which is a good thing, which is dissecting a loss for Inter-Miami over the weekend against Tigres in the second group match of the 2024 League Cup. Good and bad, though, for the most part, those of you who were able to take in the game, it was a really strong showing from the group under the circumstances. Already clinched, didn't have to really push for anything, rotated the squad, no Suarez, no Busquets, still lose 2-1, to one, but overall a good showing. I thought it was. I thought from, from both sides, actually, it was a really good game to watch. Uh, they'll be disappointed with the result, obviously, but like you said, when you have these games, sometimes you need to find that extra motivation to, to really you know get the result that you want um, and I think that when you play these types of teams you you have um, uh, they play high risk high reward football um, so they, they press a lot they're aggressive and when it comes off it can be really effective um, but obviously you have to be careful because when you do that with Miami uh, they can be really dangerous on the counter-attack but I thought that the way they pressed um, Tigres they, they got it spot on to be fair and they really managed to um, stop the rhythm of into Miami um, but you know I don't think that they they performed badly um, I think that they're they're confidence still remains and you know they'll be looking to bounce back obviously in the next game but um, yeah it was one of those it was one of those games that could have gone either way could have gone either way and as we show you the highlights now really could have gone either way because of the goals that Tigres scored two absolute world-class goals from the Mexican side early on there was an opportunity for Inter Miami to go ahead quickly here with Campana we'd hear more from him later on but the goal from Tigres that you're about to see right now is just exquisite yeah, I mean, look at this. It's uh, you don't get you don't score too many of these. So I'm sure he'll be he'll be thrilled to score against uh, a goal like this against Inter Miami. Drake has has no chance, and it, it, the way he cocks his leg back and just fires it in the top corner is really impressive. If there's a complaint, maybe Inter Miami could have done better clearing the ball before it got to that point. But we're nitpicking here. It's a world class finish. It is what it is. You tip your cap and you move on. But from that point on, Inter Miami outshot Tigre. Inter Miami out possessed Tigres in what was essentially a road game in Houston. It was a very pro Tigres crowd, a chance to see their club in the United States. That doesn't happen too often. And Inter Miami battled back to get that equalizing goal on this penalty drawn by Campana. Yeah, and Campana again in between the sticks, isn't he? Just where we want him, causing trouble. Defenders struggle to keep to keep up with his physicality. Um, and you can see the defender clearly drags him back there. And how about the penalty itself? There's been a wave, obviously, started with these no-look uh, penalties, and I've, n I've not seen Campana do these ones before, but I think it's a, it's a really impressive technique, a really impressive skill to, to pull off, you know, in a, in a big moment in, in a game, and, yeah, he gets his rewards. There's a little smile on his face as he was striking the ball, too. He seemed to know what was about to happen, and then from there, Inter-Miami could have won this late again. It was Campana. Every highlight we've shown you from Inter-Miami in this one has been about Campana. We'll talk about him more in a second, but then here's the second goal from Tigres, a Another banger off the bar and in. Again, you tip your cap, you take the loss, you move on. Yeah, exactly. We just struggled to clear our lines there again. And I think overall we defended, you know, well enough. I just think that, you know, that they may have just tipped it on the, the intensity and uh, the intensity part of the, of, of the game. Better to have it happen in a game like this where, again, it didn't matter per se. You take a step back and you look at the whole big picture of League's Cup right now. Inter Miami won the first game against Puebla. Puebla lost the second game against Tigres. So that game didn't mean anything. It was just a matter of who's first, who's second in the group. And it's not like there's a, a fixed bracket already where you know what your path is, where it's better to be first, better to be second. That was just a game between two good teams that really could have gone either way. And again, Inter Miami rotated a couple of guys not in the 11. They didn't see Suarez, they didn't see Busquets in the 11, so rotated a bit, got some other guys some minutes. But again, the one who stuck out that we've talked about a couple of times already now, Leo Campana, the penalty he scored, bit of history. He tied Gonzalo Higuain for most goals all time at the moment in Inter Miami history. I think Messi and Suarez might be on their way with the form they've been in. But for now, Campana tied for most all time. We've had this conversation a few times, you and I, here in this season. He hasn't played 
a ton, at least as much as in the past because of Suarez. But whenever he's out there, he is getting the job done and he looks dynamic as can be for Inter Miami. Yeah, he's always affecting games, isn't he? And that's what we want from him. And he's consistently knocking on the door. He has been all season um, a, a top quality player. We've said it a lot this season. Um, I, I think his game has matured. Um, I think his decision making in front of goal has, has improved since he came to the club. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm still enjoying seeing him perform week in, week out for, for Inter Miami. And, you know, it's it, it, no surprise, no secret that it's going to be difficult to keep hold of a player that um, has performed so well and e even when they're not playing so much. But his professionalism is just second to none. Um, and, and that's great to see. Big picture again coming off of this loss here. Um, you don't really ever want to put it this way, talk about moral victories or, or talk about lessons and losses because you want to win every game. That, that's your job as a professional athlete. But in this moment, in a game that, again, didn't mean anything because you were already through the round of 32, is that a good time to have a moment like this where you can reset, you can uh, figure out some of the things that do need to be better, like clearing the lines, which is what the issue was on both goals? Is there ever a quote-unquote good time to have a loss like that? I mean, you're never going to win every game, so right. I guess yes, there is a good, there is a better time to to have uh, a result like that. I think we have to admit that their form has been pretty incredible um, can't over the much last about couple of months. Up. Yeah, it ha yeah. has been um, really good to see that the team. Uh, they look a completely new look side, you know, and, uh, you know, you're bound to have dips, um, but it's how they respond. And, and we've seen the reason why they're at the top is because they've responded so well um, after after a loss. Um, so I, I expect nothing to change, um, you know, looking forward going into, into Thursday's game. And we'll get to Thursday in a moment. But first, we did catch up recently with Lawson Sutherland, who's really come onto the scene this year for Inter Miami. <laughs> Chicago to Portland to Spain to Miami. So you go Midwest, Pacific Northwest, Europe, South Florida. Your soccer journey has quite literally taken you all over the world so far. Just just walk me through it all. What's it been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's been a blessing. You know, just a lot of learning experiences and you know, a lot of fun, a lot of challenges, but you know, just enjoying every step of the way. Where's the food the best? Oof. <laughs> I'm going to say Spain. Spain? Barcelona, Paella over there. Yeah, my favorite. <laughs> can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Yeah. How much, did you pick up the language while you were there? I and, did, yeah. Did? Mm -hmm. It's been two years now that mm -hmm. since it's taken you to, to South Florida here into Miami. And it's been a quick rise for you going from Next Pro when that league began two years ago now to now playing important minutes and starting mm -hmm. games for, for the first team. How quick was that jump for you as soon as you got here to go from Next Pro and, and a regular there to, to being with the first team? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was a challenge, obviously. You know, a lot of... You know, I feel like I came here and I had a lot of, I had to pick up a lot of different pieces of my game and really learn some stuff and, you know, just putting those pieces together and kind of learning, you know, every step of the way. It's been a lot of fun. What areas do you think, because I had a chance to call some of your games when you were Next Pro that first year and you could see the talent was there and same thing, and that's what Next Pro is about, right? Putting all those pieces together. Yeah. What pieces do you think really um, kicked up a few notches that, that have gotten you to where you are now? I'd say I feel like I picked up my intensity, you know, hmm. intensity in the press, you know, my defensive side of the game. I feel like I'm kind of moving around the field better than I was. Being a part of this version of Inter Miami, obviously with all the stars that are incorporated, again, you go from next pro to now playing in a midfield next to Sergio Busquets and Messi's mm -hmm. on your wing. Yeah. Is that like a shock to you when you step into that or, or how do you process it? Because at the end of the day, you got to be a professional and, and yeah. you have to do your best, but you also grew up on these guys. Mm -hmm. So how, what is that like for you stepping in? It's just fun, man. You know, just, just getting to see that and getting the ball turned and playing it to Messi, you know, bouncing off of Busi, it's, it's fun. It's so fun. Is there a memory that, that sticks out to you, whether it's a debut or a moment you had? Is there a memory that sticks out as a top one for you? Um, you know, I'd say that my debut, the start, but there was a moment in the RSL game. Um, you know, just getting the ball to Messi on, on the wing and him taking on six guys, almost getting a goal. That was, that was pretty surreal watching. What was the toughest part of your journey? Again, you, you're traveling a lot of different places, you're trying different things, and mm -hmm. in this sport, there's a lot of people who have been in your position who, all right, maybe after Chicago and Portland, they say, that's good. Like, I'm not going to keep going. You kept going. You go to Spain, you come here. Was there a moment where you ever doubted or you ever felt like this, this might not be it? Or, and what was the most difficult part to push through? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the most difficult part was just leaving the family. You know, mm. um, obviously I came back from, from Valencia back to Portland and there was a moment where I was like, okay, I feel like I'm going to stay here in Portland. And then all of a sudden an opportunity came up to look my dad in the eyes and say, I'm leaving again. You know, I'm doing it. So it was no real doubt. You know, I felt it the whole way and it's been fun. It's awesome. And the opportunity, like you mentioned, it comes up and it opens up more doors to you to where you're at now. A few years down the line, where do you want to see yourself? What's that, what's that next goal, that next mountain for you to climb? Uh, I want to be on the national team. 
you know, start some games with the national team and just keep moving forward. Awesome. We'll be watching. We're glad to have you. And thanks for taking the time thank out with us. Thank you. Yeah, lofty goals for Lawson Sutherland, but you can't blame him for having those goals because it's been quite the journey that he's had that's taken him all over the world. Great to catch up with him. And Kieran, it's great to just get to know more of these young players for Inter Miami. He's 22. He'll be 22 until November. Comes out of nowhere. A guy who's had impacts this season early, especially when players were going down injured. There was international duty, and he was thrust into a couple of really big moments for the club. He was, yeah. And we, we noticed him in preseason. I mean, up up managed to um, train with him uh, various times when I was when I was playing and I always thought that he's a very tidy player um, very clean technically um, always scanning and looking you know looking around checking his shoulder as a midfielder which is important um, and you can see he's like very dedicated to the game um, I think he's at an age now where you know we want to see him obviously playing um, a lot more he's about to come into that stage of his career where um, he's going to you know, wanting wanting more minutes, um, but very impressive mentality for 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 a player that has come such a long way. And look, at the end of the day, he's got. There's not really many better places for him to, to right. learn that, that his trade at the moment with with the players that he's got to get into play play with and train every day. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that you know he gets his his, his real breakthrough and, and and gets those minutes that um, a player like him deserves. And again, you learn by winning in this sport, and winning is what Inter Miami was able to do again last summer in the League's Cup, trying to defend that title once again. And the club released an outstanding documentary called La Primera, which takes you behind the scenes of that League's Cup triumph last year. In that moment, I was in this headspace of just extreme focus. Sí, era un momento difícil, pero tenemos la oportunidad. Martino will be the next head coach. Con muchas expectativas de hacer las cosas bien. Así se hace. Sí, y nada, estaba, estaba con ganas de, de arrancar. Mix Cup es un torneo dificilísimo. Cuando se habla del lema del club, que es libertad para soñar, es eso, es poder soñar en grande. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already. It's great to relive all those moments from last year. And we could be on the brink of creating some more of those moments because, Kieran, it is knockout stage time here in the 2024 League Cup. It starts Thursday here, August 8th, at home against Toronto FC. It's a good opponent to kind of ease into the knockout stage. You can never take anybody lightly. I don't want to make it sound like I'm doing that here because in knockout football, you never know. But... We're only three weeks removed from beating Toronto FC 3-1 to one here. That was the night where Diego Gomez got on the board and Rodondo scored his brace. And it was just a dominant showing from Inter Miami. It's a good way to ease into the knockout stage here in theory, in theory. In theory it is, but obviously sometimes, you know, when you play against teams that are struggling in the league, they, you know, sometimes they miraculously come with right. a, a crazy cup run. And we saw the scenes last season of, of you know, the run that into Miami went on. Uh, there were times where they looked dead and buried and then all of a sudden it just they came back alive. So definitely have to be careful, but um, I'm, I'm still hoping for a strong Miami performance. And when they when they perform the way they have, you know, on average over the last two months, um, they, they should be getting a result. You talk about knockout football versus group play or regular season play in MLS. What is the biggest difference as you get into this phase now, Kieran? We talk about league play in MLS. You talk about group play in Leagues Cup. That's all very different, though, from knockout football. What is the biggest mindset shift that needs to happen as a player now that it's win or go home? I think the biggest thing, well, the biggest two things would be, you know, there's there's less room for error, obviously, because, you know, you can't, you, you, once you lose, you're out. Right. And obviously, uh, managing the, the state of the game when it's in, in, in cup competitions is, is can be different to, to the league. Um, but I think definitely for Miami, it would be um, reducing that, that margin for error. Um, you know, like we said, clearing the lines better, um, I think was probably the takeaway from the other night. Right. 
Um, apart from that, they, they just need to keep doing what they're doing. And who are you looking to to step up in a game like this? When you get to knockout football, is it more of a case of some of the periphery players need to pull their weight a little bit more or the stars just have to shine? I mean, depends depends on what, what selection he goes with. I feel I feel like he's gone for a pretty strong um, lineup the last couple of right. games in the League's Cup. So I, I would imagine he would stay the same. Um, and then it's just about the, the, the players that have, you know, been influencing the team this season to, to just keep doing what they're doing I think that you know players like Julian Gressel who's um, been so impactful this this season um, they just those guys need to you know real really stay stay on top of their game and, and deliver and that's it now all eyes will turn to this Thursday night at home at Chase Stadium at 8 p.m. against Toronto FC in the round of 32 here in the 2024 League Cup we'll be back next week to break it all down once again on the Inter Miami Weekly Show make sure you like and subscribe here on YouTube so you can be alerted for each episode the rest of the way Thank <laughs> you.